The first step, you have to have a server for sending and retrieving data with AJAX. Since I'm using XAMP server, the exercise files should be placed in the htdocs directory. I'm going to create new folder. I'll call it AJAX training. Now, inside this folder, I'll create three files. index.html script.js data.txt data.txt file is just going to have the words hello world the only thing for index.html file will do right now is to load a separate script file script.js that is going to do all of the work so let's start by creating the simplest of xhr requests we'll need to create a new variable for the object that we are creating next we need to create the request to our xhr object the open function of this object is going to require three parameters first the method which is going to be either get or post then the location of the data file since it's in the same folder as this document it will just be the name of the file I should note here that Ajax requests have what's called a same domain policy so you can't request data objects from domains other than the one you are currently on now the last parameter we pass is a boolean that specifies whether we want the request to be asynchronous or not to keep things simple we're making that false and that makes a request synchronous request this makes our browser wait until the request is done before it does anything else and this is generally a bad idea but this is going to make our code simpler for now so we have created this request but it hasn't gone to the server yet the send command is going to take care of that now I'm also going to output the results of the request to the JavaScript console let's take a look at what we get from the server right now the page doesn't do anything I'm in Chrome right now so I want to select inspect element and this will take me to the developer tools go to the console tab so when you click on the console tab you'll see that it returned an XML HTTP request object and we can open that up and take a look at what's returned from our request to the server so one of the important things that we see here is the status of the request that property gave us a number which in this case says 200 that means the Ajax call was successful if any other number was here like 404 or 500 that would mean the call to the server was unsuccessful so we can modify our code to check for that property you will see we get the same request the text from the data.txt file was loaded in the response and response text properties the response text property is what you want to use because it always has just the text of our response so let's go ahead and add with that to our document with the right line command now we can see the text hello world appear in our browser so I mentioned before that these requests we are making are synchronous and that means the server is waiting until the requests are done before it continues right now you really can't see that as a problem 
because we're only making a single request. So I'm going to change the code and make 200 requests to the server to see what would happen. Now you'll see all the requests being made because I have the console open right now. You can see that there is nothing appearing in my browser until it finishes with all the requests. If you take a look at the network tab in the developer tools in Chrome, you can actually see that the browser is executing the requests in a sequence and that the page is not even updating until the whole thing is done and that's not necessarily a good thing. So far, we've learned how to use the XML HTTP request object to make calls and request data from your server. You start by opening connection and then sending the data. You can check the status of your request as well as access the text returned by your request.